Ah, the film look. The film look. The film look. We all seem to want it these days, even the younger folks who've never actually shot anything on film in their lives. Just why is that? Well, I suppose the easiest way to explain it is that while a pristine, over-sharpened digital image, or what we used to call a video image, looks like real life, film has something else, something of another world, something almost dreamy about it. So the video look is real life, and film is the dream. And given the choice, most filmmakers will choose the dream every time. And ever since Hollywood first began to shoot on digital cameras over 20 years ago, urged on by reasons of cost and speed of shooting, they've been striving to recreate the film look with increasingly powerful software. Well, now you can do that in your own home. That's where Dehancer Pro comes in. Dehancer is one of the world's most powerful film emulation software plugins, and it's now available for my NLE of choice, Final Cut Pro. The good folks at Dehancer approached me and asked me to do a review of their software, and I said OK. I haven't been paid to make this review and I can say what I want about their software, but if you choose to buy through the code in the description, you'll get 10% off your purchase and I'll get a small commission to help me keep producing the content you like. So let's get on with it. Now I'm no effects or colour grading expert, so this won't be a tutorial video. It will instead be a brief guide to what Dehancer does, the bits of it I find useful with some examples of my YouTube work, and some of the unique selling points claimed by Dehancer themselves that really make this software stand out amongst the competition. One way that helps you to get the film look even before adding any effects or emulation is to shoot at 24 frames per second, which for a good part of the last 100 years has been settled on as the best way to get the image blur that's most naturalistic to the human eye. I also turn any sharpening right down in my Panasonic GH5. Remember it doesn't hurt to actually know your camera and be able to expose your image properly, and these are very basic rules that you should always stick to. Just remember that any software plugin, no matter how powerful, is no substitute for well shot footage in the first place. And finally, I always edit in a 24 frames per second timeline, so that even when I shoot in variable frame rates on my GH5, like 60 frames per second, I keep that basic film look. I started with a basic colour grade of my footage using colour wheels in Final Cut Pro. Then it was just a case of dragging and dropping Dehancer onto my footage and I was ready to rock. As with many plugins, I've been finding that Dehancer works best when it's used subtly. I'd say that many of the standard settings you first see when you open Dehancer are too harsh, and you'll end up turning them right down in practice. The first impressive thing for me was the ability to edit in either a Rec. 709 profile, or alternatively choose the exact make of camera you work with from the drop-down list, and then adding the specific mode you shot in, such as S-Log, etc. And whether you choose to work in Rec. 709 or choose your very own custom camera setting, you can then choose from over 50 film stock profiles to help get the exact look you want. The good news is you don't have to use a high-end camera or shoot in S-Log to get the benefits of Dehancer. I use a Panasonic GH5 and mostly shoot in 8-bit colour, so I chose to work in Rec. 709. I then had some fun experimenting with lots of different film profiles, but found two in particular suited my footage. Kodak Gold 200 and Cinestill 800T. And all of the film profiles you find in Dehancer are painstakingly based on real celluloid film stock, and I'm told Dehancer will be adding to this list of profiles as time goes by. So there'll be something for every type of shooter and every type of camera profile. When it comes to grain, now that I've been working and experimenting with Dehancer for a while, I can see what all the fuss is about with this feature. Dehancer just does it better than any other plugin I've used. That's because it doesn't just drop a blanket look across the whole frame, but considers how each part of the image is exposed to give the most realistic and sympathetic look. There are also multiple ways to manipulate grain after you've laid it on, such as the size of the grain, colour temperature, exposure, etc. But once again, I find that less is more, and I tend to go for that just visible look, which subconsciously seems to fool the eye that this may have been shot on film. I really think that it might be worth getting Dehancer just for the grain feature alone, it's that good. Next we have what is called halation. Now this is similar in some ways to what's called chromatic aberration in other film look plugins. In the case of Dehancer Pro though, halation is a lot more subtle and powerful. Again, the whole image is analyzed and the look is applied tastefully. From what I've been experiencing so far, it seems to take the highlighted edges of objects in frame and gives them a halo of light, normally starting on the reddish end of the spectrum, giving them a warm glowing effect that can again be dialed in to your heart's content. And if you're going for a specific vintage feel, then halation definitely is a good place to start. 
Now let's look at another unique selling point of Dehancer, and that is the bloom effect. Once more the whole image is analysed, taking only your highlights and giving them a soft glow, or bloom. In a couple of cases I think I've overdone this effect, partly because I'm a beginner and partly because I want you to be able to see it through the compression of YouTube. Now I know I keep saying it, but again this is a tool you should really use sparingly. Because if you don't, everything it's applied to does run the danger of looking like a 1970s perfume advert. Remember you don't need to apply every single effect in Dehancer to get the film look you want, but I'd say the bloom really comes into its own for anything shot on a sunny day, or maybe scenes containing practical lighting sources to really give them a pop. As I've mentioned before, I'm not an effects or grading expert, but I'm getting better at using two tools in particular which have helped me a lot while I've been finding my way around Dehancer, and those are false colour and clipping. Now you could easily miss these features as they're hidden away towards the bottom of the menu underneath monitoring. In short, they help you see where you're going wrong in your workflow and really help you nail the alterations to exposure that the different effects can result in, keeping you on track. So in my short time working with Dehancer, what do I like most about it and what would I like to change or alter? And who exactly is Dehancer for? Well I have to say that when I compare Dehancer to plugins such as M Film Look, which I've used on several projects, it really does appear to have the edge when it comes to film emulation. I think a lot of that is down to the power of the software, feeling less like a slapped on solution and more of a well researched, tailored and sympathetic tool. And speaking of just how powerful Dehancer is, to get the best everyday experience from this software, you'll need to make sure you have a computer with enough grunt. My base model 14-inch MacBook Pro with an M1 chip and 16 gigs of RAM could just about handle it, but the rendering of each clip did take a lot longer than I'm used to with other plugins. The Dehancer menu is well set out and fairly simple to use, but I do wish that by default false colour and clipping, two major tools by the way, were set out clearly at the top of the menu. It would make things much easier, particularly for beginners, but would also just make more logical sense in terms of working order. What stands out most for me though with Dehancer is the painstaking attention to detail to produce the multiple film profiles taken from actual celluloid stock. One big snag for many people though might be the price of the Pro version, which at the moment is $399. Now if you just make YouTube videos like me, maybe you can get by by just using some of the cheaper alternatives. But if you're a full-time shooter with demanding clients, the chances are you'll have a premium camera combined with S-Log and a powerful computer to take the best possible advantage of Dehancer. If that sounds like you, then nearly $400 for not one but two licenses, by the way, might not sound that bad. Whatever your thoughts on Dehancer, remember you can always try it for free for two weeks by going to the Dehancer website. And I hope you enjoy checking out Dehancer as much as I have.